Hey everybody, I'm Ian. And I'm Colin. And today we're reviewing Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Coming up next. So Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is a sequel to the critically acclaimed movie Beetlejuice and it follows Lydia Dietz as she's like a like a ghost hunter kind of character because she's using her power to see ghosts and uh, and it takes with her daughter Astrid played by Jenna Ortega as she really fights with her and doesn't believe in the ghosts and and that was kind of this whole movie. It's kind of shockingly little Beetlejuice. He gets his own like D plot? <laughs> this is a lot of plots. There are a bunch of like plots in this movie and that's like one of the things about this movie that like kind of made it feel so short is that they had like five different plots and then they were all just kind of ending one yep. at a time leading up into at, the end at of the, the end. movie. <laughs> right at the end. And it, we were like, we we're sitting in the theater and we're like, we're like maybe 30 minutes. We're, we're thinking that maybe 30 minutes have passed and <laughs> 10 minutes later we're in the climax of the movie and the movie ends. Like, it was it was such a ride seeing this movie. And honestly, I think it worked really well for the movie. Yeah, I think the movie does move at like a million miles an hour, but I do feel like that's in like the vein of Beetlejuice. Like Beetlejuice is such a crazy character, a very out like out there character and this movie is very out there and very fast and in your face which i feel works towards that speaking of beetlejuice michael keaton reprises his role as the titular beetlejuice and do you think he's still got the sauce honestly yes he i think so has the he sauce. is one of the best performances in the movie like he is acting his butt off in the most ridiculous way and I actually think like a lot of the main cast does a really good job. Like uh, Winona Ryder reprising her role as Lydia Dietz. I think like the way like she just really knew what she was doing and she just nailed it. I don't know. It was just it was just such a believable performance. I think it was very believable because she obviously has played that character before. But it, it kind of feels like her character didn't really age, in my opinion. It felt like it felt like she's still playing that moody teen that she played all that long ago, but, but now she's she has like a 50. child. <laughs> and then she's a she's a fifty year old woman. And you know, speaking of having a child, Jenna Ortega is in this movie. Yes. And I know we both have similar opinions on this, and the fact that she did not do very good in this movie. Yeah, she was not one of the better performances in the movie. I feel like she was kind of just playing Wednesday. And I feel like Tim Burton, the director of the movie, probably told her to Dude, just play Wednesday. I, I mean, I agree. And I think that's what the movie wanted to happen. Mm. But, like, I disagree with it, yeah. I guess. Because it, she was just really boring. Yeah. And, like, and I didn't want to, like, I really didn't want to root for her. Even though she was, like, in the right in, like, all situations. Like, when she freaked out at the proposal for uh, the, the fiancé character and Winona Ryder. And she, like, freaks out and leaves. Like, I want to be on her side, but, like, she's just, like, great to me, this movie, for some reason. Yeah, she's, like, she's not really a likable character, but then it also kind of is, like, a sort of parallel because Lydia in the first movie wasn't a very likable character, and she's pretty much just another Lydia. I just think she's way too moody. Yeah. And it's, like, and it's like, like why do I care that you're getting a boyfriend? If you're like so mean to everybody in the world. Exactly. And like the world literally ends ends in the attic and she's like, I have to see my boyfriend who I met yesterday. And it's like Yeah, that's like another thing. Like the writing in this is kind of insane. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's insane in good ways. Like like uh Willem Dafoe's character yeah, yeah. as like the the police of, of the underworld <laughs> is like the is like the greatest character because he's like he's like playing this actor who like died and became a cop but he's like still about the actor who yeah. he was so he's like all about like being real and he has this stupid <laughs> catchphrase he says the entire movie like like characters like that were great oh my gosh i just remembered the danny devito cameo in this oh movie my, i actually <laughs> completely mopping. forgot about that <laughs> and which leads into the introduction of the villain yes and who was there sometimes <laughs> like yeah, she like again that leads into like the whole this movie having five six different plots mm -hmm. all happening at the same time like we know from the moment she's first on the screen this is going to be the big bad of this movie and then she's kind of just 
walking around, like doing her own thing for half of the movie. She's literally just like wandering around, and then she, and then at the end she comes to Earth, and then she's instantly defeated, yeah. and then it's over. Like it's crazy that they like that they like shelved everything, but it was really, it really did feel like it was about the like the main antagonist was the relationship between Lydia and Astrid which I think is the main point, and I think they do it well. Like that moment yeah. where she saves her from the soul train. I think that's a sweet moment, but like. <laughs> I, I think that is a sweet moment. And I think that's like kind of because of also uh, Tim Burton's directing with it. Like this movie was so Tim Burton to me. This was like the most Tim Burton movie that's ever been made. Like, the, like from it being fast and like the weird hijinks they get up to and then the practical set pieces just was very Tim Burton to me. And the practical set pieces were so awesome. Yeah. The movie looks great. It does. And it's, and it like, it looks visually great. Everything works really well. I was never like taken out of the world at all. Like I was, the world was so believable. And I think that the reason I wasn't taken out of the world at all is because of the set pieces and the acting. It's a real testament to both of those things. But what I really want to talk about is the crazy climax musical dance number where Lydia and Beetlejuice are getting married and they're like <laughs> flying around and like all the climaxes happen during this song. It's the cr it's like one of the craziest scenes ever because the song starts and they're in the church and then every like all all the influencers who are there documenting the wedding all get sucked <laughs> into their phones and then Willem Dafoe is there with all the underworld police and they all burst in they all get frozen instantly so they didn't matter actually the whole movie and <laughs> and then uh, the and then the bad guy comes in yeah. and then she instantly gets defeated and then they're like and then Beetlejuice is like and now I get to get married. And Jenna Ortega's like, <laughs> legal loophole. And then he goes, darn. And then the movie ends. The movie does just end right there. Like, the second it cuts to the church, we're about to get married, you just know everything has to end right there because all the plot points are all leading to them going through, like, the portal or whatever to the church. And then everything does just end one after the other with, like, not a second to breathe. But I feel like that does work, again, really well because in the in the first Beetlejuice it's kind of similar with it where Beetlejuice makes them all dance and sing to a song while a bunch of their plot points are getting wrapped up and I guess Tim Burton was like how should we end this movie let's just do it in the same way and that's a sequel baby and that's a sequel so what would you rate the sequel Ian I actually I know it doesn't sound like we loved this movie, but we loved this <laughs> we movie. We did love this movie. <laughs> it was such a ride from start to finish. It was so fun. And I have to give this movie an 8 out of 10. It's definitely worth your time. I, I don't know if you need to see it in theaters, but it was definitely a fun movie to see in theaters. And it's totally worth your time. So definitely check it out. I'd definitely say maybe wait till it's not in theaters. It's a very Halloween movie. Like yes, it that's is, true. It's Halloween in the movie. So I don't know why they didn't release it during Halloween. Halloween. But... That aside, I think I'd also give this an 8, which is so surprising. Like, it was just such a fun movie. I know, and we were like hating on it the yeah. whole time too in the theater, but we loved it we at just, the same time. It was just a fun experience. And with that, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.